Hello and welcome to another Daily Academy NBA podcast on Digitally 42. Here talking about some NBA strategy as we get close to the season and uh, maybe as you're checking this out, it is in the season. And I'm talking about usage rate and minutes played, usage percentage, whatever you like to call it. Um, usage rate is an important indicator of a player's performance um, and their amount of possessions that they use. Um, and it also can take into account injuries and player rotations because these numbers go up and down based on players that are on the floor. Here's the, the definition is, is below here um, from Basketball Reference, and it's an estimate of the percentage of a team plays used by a player while he was on the floor. So the numbers seem complicated. If you look at this formula here, I'm not going to read it out to you. It's a very complicated performance. But it essentially indicates how involved a given player is in their team's offense. It's also important to be able to distinguish a low usage rate from a high usage one. Utilizing that number will help you glean information on players who stand out as potential, potential value or upside play. So I used the Kings from last year as an example. And if you see the chart here below, when both Gay and Cousins, Rudy Gay and DeMarcus Cousins are on the court, we they account for 57% of the Kings' possessions there. 34.2% um, for Cousins, 24.8% for Rudy Gay. Now, if you look at the numbers with Cousins on the floor and Rudy Gay out, DeMarcus Cousins jumps all the way up to 38.2% usage. 4% bump in usage is substantial, and that 38.2% rate for Cousins would have put him second behind only Russell Westbrook, who had 38.4% um, if that were over the course of the season. So, And then if you look with Cousins out and Gay on the court, Gay jumps up to 30.7% here and 5.9% uh, increase when Cousins is not on the court. So obviously, some of the big usage rate sitting out, uh, doing an injury, whatever it may be, You've got a lot of possessions that you need to make up. A player like Rudy Gay, perfect example of someone who takes on a lot of those extra possessions, extra shots, controls the offense a little bit more, runs more through him than anyone else. So it's it's important to be able to see these numbers, find them, and know what to do with them. NBA Wow is a site that I use to uh, get a lot of this information, and uh, that's a great source of information there for you for usage rate players on and off the court specifically. And then another key thing to, to do is finding bench players who have high usage rates that play small minutes. A lot of people just look when they want to build their cash game GPP lineups, and they want to find guys that play a ton of minutes, and they say, this is my guy. But a lot of times you can look at guys who don't play a lot of minutes but are heavily involved in the offense off of the court or off the bench. So I'll give you a couple examples here from 2014 season. Maurice Spates, 29.1%. Lou Williams, 27%. Isaiah Thomas, 27.8. Gerald Green, 28.4. All of those players had usage rates in the top 30 of NBA players, despite being bench players. And the correlation to minutes played is important because none of these players finished in the top 150 in the NBA in minutes per game. Um, Thomas was 154. Williams, 161. Green, 251st. And Spates, 15.9 minutes per game, 322nd. So minutes per game, minutes often equal opportunity, especially in the NBA, but it's not always the case. Players such as Ben McLemore, another example from the Kings, 32.6 minutes per game last season. Seems like an enticing option, especially on FanDuel, where you do have to roster two players at a weak shooting guard position, especially when it's a short slate. But his production, once you look at that, the appeal to play him diminishes quickly. He averaged 12.1 points per game, but just 2.9 rebounds and 1.7 assists. Those numbers aren't terrible, but he's the kind of guy that is a cash game play and not a uh, GVP guy because he doesn't have much upside. And even the cash game, I mean, he's a fringe cash game play because his peripheral stats don't always pay off. And as mentioned in a couple other of these NBA Academy podcasts, you don't necessarily need players that are going to score a ton of points. You get fantasy production in a lot of different ways, assists, rebounds, steals, all those things actually even more valuable than the, the individual points themselves. So you can rack up points in a hurry that way. An ideal example of minutes equaling opportunity and production is Jimmy Butler. Um, led the NBA minutes per game last year, 38.7%. Also had a solid usage rate of 21.6. And he averaged 20 points, 5.8 rebounds, 3.3 assists. Was top 10 in steals with 1.8. So this is a guy who not only sees opportunity, gets minutes, and has an incredibly high DFS floor. I mean, he's one of the best cash game plays, if not the best cash, best cash game play at the shooting guard position and among a lot of positions as well. So um, when you're building your lineups, it's important to take into account injury situation first. Find out who's in, who's out, and find out what you can do, where you can take advantage. Say there's a big player that's out, like DeMarcus Cousins. You want to know that Rudy Gay steps into a bigger role. 
And once you know that information, it's not something you're going to need to look up every single day. So knowing these things, knowing the rotations, who benefits when certain players sit out is very important. Obviously, going to a new season, we got different players in different spots. So it's going to take you know a few games to get an idea of who's taking that step. But utilize this information, find that out, and you can certainly take advantage. And once, once you've found these things out, things that are going to be kind of second nature to you moving forward, and you'll have a more successful NBA DFS season and career past that. So thanks for hanging out with me here. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Got lots of other great content at dailyfantasycafe.com. If you got any questions, reach out to us at that Twitter account or find us in the forums. Our experts are always willing to help with uh, any information that you may have or any questions you have. Um, so check those out at dailyfantasycafe.com.